Hi, my name is Jenny and today I am showing you a selection of the best chronographs for every budget in seven different price categories. After watching this video, you will know exactly which chronograph to go for no matter if your budget is 300 or $300,000. So let's get started. Right, let's start out with chronographs up to $1,000. First, I want to introduce the Siegel 1963 chronograph, a very beautiful chronograph that has gained quite a following online. It is an homage to the original chronograph from 1963, which was built for the Chinese Air Force. Though this isn't waterproof, you'll get an actual column wheel chronograph, more about that in the description box, for about $250, depending on where you find it online, which you can see through the exhibition case bag. It is also one of the most beautiful movements I have seen so far at this price point. And you know what's even better is I think you can choose between a 38 millimeter and a 42 millimeter version as well as a sapphire or an acrylic crystal. It's definitely a great choice within that price range and for everyone who enjoys, you know, a historical reference in their watches. And I mean, we have to include a Seiko within this price range too. And let me say it right away, there is plenty to choose from. So let's pick the Seiko SSC 081P1. This isn't a mechanical, but a quartz watch, but that way it is able to be competitive, not only in price as this one runs for about like $300, but also in its features as this one also houses a compass for example it's definitely a good choice for those of you out there who are looking for a more utilitarian approach next up i would like to add the tissot chrono xl here it measures about 45 millimeter in diameter which makes this one a great choice for big wrists and you also get treated to a handy date display on this one as well as different dial colors if you want things to look a bit more different depending on where you are and where you buy it from you would have to spend about 300 dollars for this one and and so watch number four is a Bulova, more specifically the Luna Pilot. It is a relatively large watch too, measuring about 45 millimeter in diameter and a whopping 53 millimeter in lug to lug. So smaller wrists have to check whether or not this feels comfortable. It is an homage to the original watch from 1971, that one of the astronauts from the Apollo 15 mission war, which was developed to endure the conditions on the moon. It is also a quartz watch, but a high frequency quartz. So you get a nice sweep and it runs for about 500 dollars right but before we get into our next category i want to take the time and thank today's sponsor chronix for keeping these lights here on chronix is an international online pre-owned watch retailer with over 32 brands and 800 models providing pickup locations and lounges all over the world for you and only valid through this month so until the end of September, I have a special promo code for you. If you want, you can use promo code Jenny Special when purchasing from Chronix to get an extra discount. And just for transparency, there is no financial kickback for me, but you will get to save money on your next Chronix purchase if you use the code Jenny Special on Chronix.com. I myself bought my Yacht Master from Chronix. I can absolutely recommend it. And if you want to try it out, you can use a Jenny Special on Chronix.com. It is comparably very easy to spend a lot of money pretty quickly when it comes to chronographs considering the complication, but there's also a lot you get when it comes to the $1,000 to $5,000 price range, including some true watch icons. And the first one is the classic Max Beer Chronoscope from Junghans. The German watch manufacturer is known for its Bauhaus design and the Max Beer Chronoscope is the ideal choice for all of the minimalists out there. It houses an automatic caliper, the J8080, which is based on an ETA 7750, a basic, but you know, solid choice, which could be yours for about $2,000. And we are going to continue with another German watch. This time it's the Zin 365 Flieger. What's really great about this chrono is not only that it's, you know, robust and has a robust case and a classic design, but also its size. It measures about 38 millimeter in diameter and it has a lug to lug of only 46 millimeter which is comparably a small for a chronograph which is great for people with small wrists who are looking for a proper chronograph that is packed with complications like this one with a day and a date complication you can also choose between different dark colors and finishes as well as bracelets or straps as well as acrylic or sapphire crystals on top and it starts about two thousand and three hundred dollars with a leather strap okay now we're going to look at something completely different the Longines master chrono running for about three thousand dollars you 
get a less sporty, but definitely a more elegant kind of chronograph. This one is also packed with lots of extras on top of being a column wheel chronograph, like a moon phase, you know, I love them, but also a day and month display at 12, which is definitely not the norm at this price point. And of course, the newly released Black Bay Chrono has to be included in this list too. I know this is a bit of a tricky one because it would still fall below the 5,000 price range where I live, but this one might be a bit above 5K depending on where you live. Nevertheless, this one could be considered one of the, I would say like new classics and signifies to this 50th anniversary since introducing their first ever chronograph with a reworked case and two dial variations. And some of you might already know how obsessed we watch people get with a simple, you know, black and white dial combo. It also houses Tudor's new in-house caliber MT5813, which is CRC certified in a 41 millimeter case. Okay, let's snap it up a bit further and look at the chronographs in between the five and $10,000. Here's where we get to the, what I would call the historical heavy hitters. This next watch is probably a good example for a watch that is popular amongst not only the watch community, but people outside of that too, the Tag Heuer Monaco. It has been around for decades and was first made famous for being seen on Steve McQueen's wrist in the legendary movie uh, Le Mans, but also rather recently when Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad gifted the watch to Walter White in one of the episodes. Its rectangular case is very striking and perhaps for some an acquired taste, but definitely a true watch icon, which starts at about $5,000 with an automatic movement and a power reserve of about 40 hours. This next chronograph is probably one of the two most popular chronographs right now and a watch you will most definitely stumble across sooner rather than later when starting to get into watches, the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Professional. There are a lot of variation of this chronograph out since it has been around for quite some time and it's probably the number one go-to watch for every astronomy fan out there. I did an in-depth review of this watch, which I will link for you down below because there is so much to talk about this watch. It houses one of the most beautiful movements I've seen below the 10,000 and starts at about $6,300. And so for this next watch, I have to say that I am a bit torn because there are actually two chronographs from Breitling that I would like to suggest. Both are more or less the figureheads of the brand with the first one being the chronomat and the second one being the Navi Timer. The Navi Timer is one of the most recognized pilot watches with its iconic bezel and dial design. You can calculate all sorts of equations with it whilst carrying a lot of aviation history on your wrist, starting at about $8,700 if you are going for the B01 in-house caliber variation of this watch. And it would be a great choice if you are looking for, you know, a very intricate but classic chronograph. And with the current chronomat, Breitling throws it back to its first chronomats from the 1980s. And it is this very strong and distinct look that so many watch lovers appreciate. It also has an in-house caliber and looks especially striking with the Breitling. Typical steel bracelet starting at about $8,250 in full steel. I would recommend a chronomat for bigger wrists and those who, you know, do not want to make a compromise between elegance and function. The last chronograph in this category is another newly released watch, the Zenith El Primero Chronomaster Sport, which sparked up quite the debate due to its design and the similarities to another chronograph we're going to talk about in a minute. Those differently colored subdials are a trademark of the El Primero since 1969, and this chronograph can measure the time to the tenth of a second featuring a fixed ceramic tachymeter scale on the bezel. Given its overall design and technical specs, this chronograph is going for right it's about $10,000 and it is definitely very pricey, but I have to say that what you get here is really a lot. And there are other chronographs more expensive than this one with less advanced movement, for example. Which brings us right to our next category for which we are going to look at chronographs that sit in between 10,000 and 20,000. This category right here features not only a lot of uh, aforementioned watches and precious metals, but also some very special stainless steel chronographs, partially with some very crazy specs. The first one is the Jeuge Le Coultre Polaris chronograph, a surprisingly versatile chronograph for JLC that combines JLC's incredible understanding of proportions in their you know, effortless elegance. It is a larger chrono with 42 millimeter in diameter, but that leaves enough space on the dial to include the tachymeter scale on the inside. So it is made to you know, ideally measure speed over a given distance. Duh, it's a chronograph. But you can also you know, just 
simply admire the different dial finishes instead. So with a starting price at about $11,300, you can get, as they say, a watch from the watchmaker's watchmaker. Anyways, let's have a look at the watch number two, another Zenith, the Zenith D5 21. It is, and I have to use that word, a performance monster, and even one-ups the El Primero Chronomaster I've just mentioned. This D5 21 makes a giant leap forward when it comes to precision, which means that you can, and then hold on to your horses, measure time up to the hundredth of a second with this one. I mean, there is no way that I would ever be quick enough with my finger to actually make full use of that. But you know, it's still really impressive and just crazy to look at too. And you can get all of that for about $13,500. So if you are looking for the most precise chronograph, this one is the watch for you. And you know, I cannot make this list without the Rolex Daytona. As of right now, it is probably one of the most sought after watches with some crazy markups on the secondary market with the retail price starting at about $13,200. It is also the watch a lot of people compared the Chronomaster Sport to as they do share a lot of similarities, but they are still two very different watches, I would say. With a diameter of 40 millimeter and a lug to lug of 47 millimeter, the Daytona is surprisingly easy to pull off for both bigger and smaller wrists, which makes this a great watch to share with a partner if you want to do that. The last one in this category might be a bit of an outlier, but a very special one that I think deserves some recognition. The Panerai Luminor Yachts Challenge. You know, we do see a lot of similar dial layouts and case designs with chronographs. So I wanted to pick a watch that looks more special for all of those who like to wear a watch you perhaps won't see every day. With its 44 millimeter case diameter, it is definitely a statement and you get the trademark crown guards Panerai is so well known for. It's up to 100 meter water resistance resistant and a great choice if you are into robust ceramic and some very distinct looks starting at about $15,900. Okay, right, let's move up a bit higher and look at what the 20 to 50,000 price bracket has to offer. Chronographs from this category are starting to come from watch brands associated with the so-called Holy Trinity or other highly regarded watchmakers from all over the world. And there are quite a lot of controversies and rumors about this first watch, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Chrono. Allegedly, Gerard Genta himself stormed into AP's headquarters in 1993 when the first offshore was released, stating that they have ruined his creation with it as he designed the bases, the Royal Oak, for this new release. And whether if this is true or not, AP's customers were and still are convinced that this watch is a huge success. And so the chronograph version of the offshore line is equally popular with AP customers who prefer, I want to say like a hyper-masculine, very large version of an iconic Genta design going for about $30,000 and more depending on the configuration. This next chronograph is not so much about groundbreaking designs, but classic and established watchmaking traditions with a lot of history. The Erlange und Söhne 1815 chronograph. It is a very classic and classy chronograph made in Germany. And you can already, you know, feel how sophisticated it is by just holding it in your hand. And for this one, I have to say that I'm referring to its price on the secondary market as this one, you know, goes for a bit under $50,000. So I would say that it's a for this price bracket. And yeah, for under 50,000, you get a true made in Germany chronograph with an incredibly beautiful movement in different types of precious metals and dial colors. Okie dokie, we're almost on top of the hill of the chronographs and it starts to get even crazier on our way up there. So for the 50,000 to $100,000 price category, we are going to have a look at the first Patek Philippe in this list. Like AP, Patek Philippe is also considered to be part of the Holy Watch Trinity. And perhaps you can see why with this Patek Philippe flyback chronograph annual calendar, the refined somber shimmers through the dial and it is only interrupted by those fine circular lines and stick out markers that only seem to, I want to say like reinforce this sun-like motif of the watch dial. It's a highly complicated watch as you can tell by the name. So, you know, it not only measures passing time, but Patek also, you know, just casually threw an annual calendar on top of that. And all of that considered, it's a no surprise that this watch goes for a retail price of about 70,000. And next up, we have another a watch from the Holy Trinity and completed all. It's a Vacheron Constantin's Corne de Vache. It is anything but mainstream and if that's what you're into and you have the budget, this might be the perfect choice for you. It's a platinum chronograph with a perfectly balanced dial design and one of the most interesting lugs I've seen on a watch which references the first chronographs a VC put out in 1955. It retails for about $73,000 with a watch dial that is only topped by its incredible caliber that you can see on the back of this watch. And so now we are at the top now for our last category and we're looking at everything beyond the $100,000 price range. And at this point there are 
you know, almost no limits to complications and finishings and materials. So let's look at the first one. The Alange und Söhne 1815 Radtrafant Perpetual Calendar going for about $189,000 for many serious collectors. This combination of complications is the ultimate mix as you have, you know, SNM gives it away, an annual calendar, but also a Radtrafant, which means a split seconds chronograph. So you are able to time two time intervals at the same time. So you also get an additional pusher, which sits at 10 o'clock here. This type of complication is incredibly difficult to make and therefore quite rare. And you know, explains to where that price tag is coming from. And so last but not least, I want to show you what you could be buying with $983,000. Some of you might already guess that it has to be some kind of Richard Mill and well, you're not mistaken. If you want to spend almost $1 million on a watch, you could do so with the RM2501 Tourbillon Chronograph Adventure. It has been developed in cooperation with Sylvester Stallone and carries all kinds of complications and add-ons like a compass, a power surf indicator, uh, a tourbillon, you've got a carbon case, a bidirectional daytime bezel, and so much more. I know this is a crazy looking watch, but I do appreciate the effort and craftsmanship behind it. Not everything can be everyone's cup of tea, so I'm happy for whomever is able to afford and enjoy crazy watches like this one. And that was it, a list of some of the most amazing chronographs divided into seven categories with prices starting from about $250 up to almost 1 million. And now I am left with only one more question. Which one of these is your favorite? As always, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. It really helps out with the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one, you can subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next one. Bye.